So here I've got the uh, mortise chopped and this is the kind of fit I've got here. So it's, it's pretty tight. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of fit you're looking for. So now I want to just glue that in. Got here the spreading glue. And you don't want too much glue, but uh, you don't want to be stingy. If you've got a tight fit, then obviously having too much glue is going to make the tight the, the fit even tighter. So you know your tote might not actually fit again. Script glue surfaces. Get a bit of glue on the actual tote. And I'm just going to lightly tap it in with the, my hammer, wherever that went. <laughs> okay, never mind. That was my guitar falling over. You can hear maybe the air. And that's about in. So this is just going to be left to dry and uh, you can clean up these curves, obviously meet, make this meet with the surface, uh, finish rounding off any corners you left and uh, sandpaper and finish it up. So here I have finished my tote. Um, I've just finished with a, you know, some rasps. Uh, cleaning up these kind of round bits here, smoothing everything out, and I've sanded everything down to around 400 grit with some sandpaper. Uh, after I've done that, I squared off the ends, uh, both the front and the back, uh, roughly with a block plane so that the end grain is nice and smooth and flat. And I also made sure the sides and this top section here all the way is uh, you know, relatively flat, smooth and clean of any marks. Now the next thing we want to do is to uh, put these decorative chamfers on. They're decorative so they're all kind of, well, optional. And I don't know if you can see but I've got some guidelines marked. And these two top chamfers all the way along the length of the plane, they are marked so that uh, from the side of the plane in I've marked four millimeters, square line all the way down, and from the top down, it's 10 centimeters and all the way. And that chamfer will be cut using a block plane, just going along here until I hit both lines. Uh, so, you know, pretty simple thing. But these end chamfers here provide a special kind of case, and you basically want to do the same measurement again. So, from this face down, four millimeters and from the front down that way, uh, 10 millimeters. So you get this kind of piece here. And from the top section here down, it's up to you, but I've got 40 millimeters as a kind of stop. Um, you can take it further down or leave it a bit further up. It's up to you. But once you've got that marked out, you want to take a half round file, rasp or whatever, or you can even use gouge. And you basically just want to kind of take this little scallop out of the end so you create a kind of dip like that and it's the same as in my jack plane video if you've seen it but you just keep kind of you know shaving down and checking 
until you get this nice scallop. Once you've got that, you want to take either a, a broad chisel or a float file rasp and you just kind of shave down this flat section, leaving half of this scallop that you left here and you just kind of shave it down so you get a nice even chamfer along there. And that's your end chamfers done. So once you've done that, the whole plane is pretty much, or well, the plane body is pretty much done. So the only thing left is to true up the sole and flatten it and uh, to put a finish on. But that's obviously the last thing you want to do. So the next thing you want to do after you've got the chamfers done is to make the wedge to keep your blade in place and I'll show you that next. Okay, so now it's time to make the wedge and uh, you can see here I've got a piece of, well this is maple, um, this is actually a kind of reject uh, I started on uh, from my previous planes and well I, I decided I could use this but you need a piece of stock which is, um, this is about 14 millimeters long, uh, not 14 millimeters, 14 centimeters you can see here and the thickness is about three quarters of an inch, 19 millimeters, and the width is the width of the opening in your plane. So you want it to fit kind of in there nicely and with not much kind of side play. So it's nice and snug. And basically, what you want to do is you want to um, draw on the side a the angle that you had for your uh, plane when you um, bedded it. Um, my plane I decided on 8 degrees so I'm going to, I, I drew an 8 degree line here and it doesn't have to be exact because that's just going to get you in the rough ballpark and what you do is you just kind of take a bolt plane and uh, shave that down to a nice even flat surface and I've already done it so you can't really see but this still needs fine tuning um, but let's get my blade. Uh, with the iron in, you want to be able to put your plane, uh, your wedge in, and give it some light taps. And once you've done that, you should be able to see on the edge of your kind of abutment here. Uh, kind of what kind of a gap you have on both sides and that will allow you to tune the wedge um, so you can take uh, more shavings off one side or the other side depending on what it looks like now this one is kind of well, this one's kind of close but it still needs a bit of fine tuning and you can tell that it needs some work by, well, if you if you take some kind of oil like linseed oil or something and you kind of rub it on the inside faces of the wedge abutments, when you tap the wedge in, uh, some oil will transfer onto the wedge and you should be able to see the marks. And I don't know if you can see here, but you can see that this side doesn't have as full of a, uh, has more contact than this side. So I need to take some off this edge here and also need to make it generally a little bit steeper. So I'm just going to do that. So I have my vise, uh, take my little block plane, set for a pretty fine cut, and I'm just going to take some shavings off. And that should be enough to uh, kind of fine tune. So you just keep doing that until you get a nice fit. So I've now tuned this slope here and it fits nicely in my plane but you can see it's way too thick and this end here is uh, pretty chunky here so basically this will not fit all the way down into the mouth now you want this to go quite far down into the mouth because you want some support down at the right at the edge of the blade to avoid chatter so you want to take down this edge maybe down to about two or three millimeters at the end so I've got all this material here to take off and Basically you just keep test fitting in your plane and once it gets down far enough you can stop. But you want it to be um, close to the mouth but you don't want it right up to the mouth because it could jam. So maybe about 5mm away from the actual blade edge would be a good uh, distance to be. 
so I'm just going to clamp it in the little vise and uh, go away at it with a block plane. So my wedge is done and I'm happy with the fit so I'm just going to push, press uh, this against the abutments and hold it in the final position while I take a sharp pencil and I trace along the abutment lines and that gives me this outline here and this is what we need to cut uh, so that we can have some extra space for the shavings to come out um, and once you've got those two side lines there you want to take a square and maybe I don't know halfway uh, along this kind of wedge piece here just draw a horizontal line across and now it's probably hard to see I'll spot mark the line is a bit clearer My abutment line flows along here, and there's a kind of angle where we carved for the uh, opening of the mouth as it kind of wedges down that way. Um, so we need to make this here clear too. And I'm just going to. So, roughly, this is the kind of shape. And here, we'll, this, this piece here will all be chopped out and this piece remaining here will be sloped downwards so that uh, the, the shavings coming out here will just kind of smoothly flow out of the mouth. And uh, this is obviously up here at the top, the kind of uh, area where you want to start sloping from. So this is the top of the abutment, uh, where the abutment ends. So I've just drawn a line across and from that line down to an arbitrary line halfway downish, I'm just going to slope down uh, in a kind of straight ramp. So I'm just going to chop that out. Uh, I have to get my saw. So I'm first going to chop vertically and you don't have to be uh, too precise. Because eventually you can pare down uh, to the lines later for fine fitting. saw and go across there but chop this out and then you can uh, clean up this ramp. So here I've got my little prongs here shaped with my ramp and it's come down to almost like a knife edge. Uh, that's to you know prevent any shavings getting jammed up there and you can see here I've rounded off these tips as well so that uh, any shavings that come up here will just kind of hopefully flow past and up the middle section here. And the last thing we need to do to the wedge to complete it is to mark off the top here uh, to shape it. And it's up to you. I'm choosing this kind of coffin design here. So I'm just going to uh, saw that and then block plane clean it up. But you can do any shape here. You can have a round shape. You can you know, do all sorts of you know, fancy shapes you feel like. But uh, the coffin is the kind of standard shape. So I'm just going to do a coffin type shape here. Uh, the measurements are arbitrary, um, I just kind of measured out what looked right to me. So, you know, shape up the, the head of the, the wedge how you want. <laughs> 